OK, uh, so this is just a, a short introduction to the databases we provided. So not everyone wants to store their data in files on their, on their uh, you know, parallel file system. In some cases, you know, it's better fit with the databases. And we do provide some database services at NERSC. Uh, so basically, we provide both uh, relational databases, SQL databases, uh, MySQL, and Postgres. Uh, and also uh, MongoDB for those who prefer uh, schema-less database uh, and there's the well the only important thing in this talk is there's a form <laughs> and if you if you want one you should go to that site to to um, request it now these services are only meant to accompany comp computational work done at NERSC they're not like the only thing that you do at NERSC is to host data in these databases uh, and so for example uh, unless you, unless there's a, a specific good reason why you need to be able to access these from outside NERSC they're, they're generally only accessible from within the NERSC uh, network. Um, and they're also, they're just hosted on single servers. They're shared with many other users, so they're not designed for high performance, really. Um, but in the future, and uh, Tony will talk about this, uh, we have, we'll have these services called SPIN, and we do, to some extent, already have that, uh, that allows people to spin up their own user-configured databases. Um, but at the moment, you can, you can just request these. And for certain workloads, these will still continue to exist and, and be a better option. OK, uh, so just a quick introduction to the SQL databases. Um, so um, you know, some general sort of tips. These are pretty standard options where you know in advance the schema that you, that you want to store in here. Um, they're relational databases, so this means you know, tables of rows and columns that uh, some connected together with, uh, with keys that you can use to, to join together table, these tables. Um, the, the kind of setup we have here is really only meant for sort of mid-size databases, so you know, of order a few gigabytes or whatever. Um, but you know, these are very stable services, so they're pretty good for, uh, for example, transactional operations or things where you want to know that your database is consistent. As I mentioned again, these are single databases on single servers. And so this is the main point of reiterating here is to say that if you access it from 10,000 compute nodes on Cori, you, they will, you won't get uh, you know, 10,000 times the performance because it will be serialized at this server. Um, so you know, that, the way that people often interact with it if they do want to talk from large jobs is, for example, if they have an MPI job, just to have one rank communicating with the database and then communicating internally. Um, um, you know, people's choice between Postgres and MySQL is normally because of other reasons, like they already are familiar with one or other of them. Um, but some example, uh, you know, advantages of Postgres are uh, particularly for certain communities like the Astro community. There's various extensions that have already been written, various functions that can just be used off the shelf. Uh, and it also has a good adherence to the SQL standards, uh, whereas MySQL is probably one of the, you know, probably the most popular option for this kind of thing. And, and uh, a good place to start. Um, so this is mainly to show uh, that the hosts that we use for these, so Postgres services are hosted on Nurse DB03 now, and MySQL services on Nurse DB04. Um, you know, this isn't this very basic SQL isn't going to get you anywhere. But the first thing you'll want to do is change the password that I give you, the default password that uh, I provide you, uh, and then you know the you can create tables and so forth. Um, and this is a good resource if you didn't know about it for learning SQL. Uh, meanwhile, for the MongoDB uh, is very useful for where you don't know the structure of your data but in advance. Uh, it's also got, if, if you like JSON, it's got a nice structure of key value. Uh, and if you like JavaScript, then it's nice that you can query things with JavaScript expressions. Um, it also has queries can be very fast, and this is one of the people, reasons people like Mongo. This is somewhat mitigated in our case because we have this shared service. So you know, different other users require what you just because you're frequently accessing it doesn't mean it will necessarily be in the cache because other users' data may be in there. Um, sort of related to that, even though it can be you know a sharded service that's extremely high performance. Uh, the setup we have here is not really configured for very high performance, really. Um, 
but it's still good for kind of unstructured data. And we do have reasonably large capacities here, so you can put in more stuff than you probably would with the SQL services that we have. Uh, OK, and here, similarly, very basic uh, Mongo commands. Uh, we actually have a module on the compute services here that you have to load, and then you can just access it via this Mongo shell command. Um, and then you can write these sort of JavaScript expressions and put documents, as they're called in Mongo, into the database. Uh, but most people like to interact, as with most things these days, via Python. Uh, and so you can use the PyMongo library and connect to that and do everything in Python. OK, uh, so just a, um, a couple of comments about where databases are actually used here. Um, so as I mentioned, you can access via the command line or, or in your scripted code. But a lot of the use comes from these science gateway applications, which are like web services where people want to query derived data that they've put in the databases here. Um, just, I just put some, some observations about where people tend to use files or databases in science which might be different to in industry or what have you. Um, but generally speaking, as, as Jolyn indicated, that uh, large, massively parallel HPC programs normally write their data out in, in files. Uh, this has advantages for large shared collaborations, for example, that it's easier to share the data as well. You can just copy, and we'll, we'll hear about data transfer later. You can just copy the files elsewhere. Um, however, you know, when you have uh, some derived data and you want to have a web application that you know, queries this very fast, then the database is a good model. Uh, similarly, for metadata about the, the experimental conditions um, where you might want an SQL database if you really well know the, con the, the, the schema and you want it to be very stable, for example. Uh, but in other cases, you're aggregating a lot of different streams of data, and you might want to change the schema as you go along, in which case, uh, you know, no SQL, data might, uh, no SQL database might be a better match. Uh, and where we really see uh, Mongo in particular used a lot is in workflows that are running at NERSC, and people want to have um, provenance and a, a set of the state. You know, where, where is the processing? That, where, what is the state of the processing? And be able to query that. Uh, and as I said, the only really important thing here is that if you want one, please contact us via this form. <laughs>